firefighters and EMS workers have been killed in the last 120 days in Gaza. Not to mention that 2023 before October was the deadliest year in Palestine before October. The increase in the apartheid regime of the brutality of tactics that they've been using has only escalated in recent years. They were waiting for an opportunity like October to strike the Palestinians and in order to ethnically cleanse Gaza. It's something that we're seeing now. The Mawasi, Al Mawasi refugee camp, which is the only safe zone in Gaza right now, pushed up against the Mediterranean Sea, yeah. right next to the border of Egypt. It's the only place deemed safe in Gaza. So if you look on the maps of where the bombings have been happening, bombings have been happening in the Mawasi refugee camp. And Rafa, they, they're starting the ground invasion just the other day into Rafa. There is no safe place in Gaza. They've been bombed indiscriminately for four months now. Sickening watching our elected officials talk about how much they're trying to protect life in Gaza. Sickening when Mark Cartwright says that he's doing everything he can in order to prevent more human suffering in Gaza. But when Mark Cartwright met with the Palestinian locally just about a week and a half ago, I can't. I can't sign a ceasefire. Ten times he was asked to sign a ceasefire. He was told about the family members that one of his constituents has lost. 45 family members in Gaza. I can't. I can't sign a ceasefire. I can't. I can't. Ten times he was asked. Ten times he said that he couldn't. Not that he didn't want to, but that he can't. He can't. I can't. Is it because he's getting $17,000 a cycle from the defense contractors? Or is it the $33,000 a cycle from the Zionist lobby? $23,000 from J Street in 2022. Another $10,000 for APAC. We get hate because we ask for a ceasefire. We want peace. And people will start stuff with us in the street. The most sickening part about all of this to me though, is inside the Democrat headquarters in Luzerne County. There's a poster right by the door. Not poster. Flyer, a banner. And on the banner is a quote from Martin Luther King. It says that those who love peace must organize as effectively as those who love war. The gall, the gall on the Democrats to have this banner in their headquarters in Luzerne County. And for them to be organizing against peace and for war. Sickening, gross. Disgusting. 120 days, they thought we would forget. They thought we would forget. They thought that we would die down and that we would just let the Palestinians be murdered indiscriminately, as has happened time and time again. The fifth major escalation in 16 years, right? Five and 16 years. several years, there was no chocolate or cookies allowed in the Gaza. For three years, children didn't know what chocolate tasted like. Every day that goes on, I'm more and more ashamed of being registered as a Democrat. Every day that goes on, more and more sickening. We go and we'll protest Matt Cartwright. We'll be there tomorrow. He's, he'll be in Wilkes Bear. Show up, guys. One to four o'clock, public square. He's collecting petitions because 
he needs his constituents to sign off to say that he's done such a good job the last cycle that we want him to run again. He needs a thousand signatures, so he's cramming in order to try to get them. We said in October that we would forget. We said in November that we would forget. In December, in January, now it's February. It's election year. Did we forget? Hell no. No, we didn't forget. We've been organizing. We've been showing up to rallies. We've been organizing marches. We've planned vigils. Showed up at the mall before Christmas. Just raising, raising awareness. The important thing is to never stop talking about Palestine. Because they want to forget. They want to put it out of their mind. And the more that we bring it up, the more we won't let them. We have to constantly bring it up, keep it in their faces, because we're not forgetting. We're bearing witness. We see it all over our social media, on our phones every time we log in. But they don't. That's not on their feed. So it's our job in order to remind them, day in and day out, of what is happening. They want to put it out of their mind, but we won't let them. Monday, Cartwright will be up here in Peckville, signing more petitions. We'll be there. So I want to thank each and every one of you for continuing to show up, for your energy, your passion, and a better world is possible. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! So there, there, we talk about like um, Hamas using civilians to hide. Come on, it's like. When Israel, how about that about the uh, Israel killed three Jews? They were speaking Yiddish. They had signs. They had a white flag out there. They still got by the most moral army in the world. What the? You know. the bodies what what can they not see what can they not see it's mass murder and what we need to send is help aid troops to stop bombing you know what you know I'd rather go as a ground force to stop Israeli forces from like mass murder the UN should go in there of course well let's let's stop the you know UN funding uh, the UN R -E -W -H, I, I forget it the acronym, the aid people that they... UNWRA. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. It's like, what can they not see? Who are they representing? They're not representing us. They're not representing the majority of the American public and the world who says no. From the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! Palestine will be free! Not another nickel, not another dime! Not another nickel! No more money for Israel's crimes. No more money for Israel's crimes. From Palestine to Mexico. From Palestine to Mexico. All the walls have got to go. All the walls have got to go. No more hiding, no more fear. No more hiding, no more fear. Genocide is crystal clear. Genocide is crystal clear. There are different signs, different labels. CLNW. Does anyone know what that means? CLNW, Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. That's what this plant was before it produced bombs. This plant was used to produce transportation across our nation. They used to produce the iron right across the street in the iron furnaces, and they would ship it across to here where they would produce rail lines to move goods and people across this country. But in 1953, the plant changed. 
It was bought by the army in order to produce munitions. So from producing a service that was good for the public welfare, they are now producing bombs. The labor of these people, instead of helping fellow Americans, are being used to kill innocent people around the world. It would be no different to expect if we were to be in a hot war with China, where China would want to bomb this plant. And not only this plant, they would want to bomb the storages. And where do they store the munitions? Not in a warehouse, on our streets, right next to homes. This factory makes us unsafe. This factory producing bombs here in our city makes us unsafe. It's a hazard for the people that live in this community. We don't want to tear the walls of this factory down. We would like to be able to, this is a huge plant, half a million square feet in there. You can produce locomotives. You can make, it's big enough to produce cars in that factory. And what are we making? Bombs. Bombs. That's what we're deciding to make in this factory. Bombs. We want a just transition away from the war economy to productive forces. We want to increase our standard of living here in Pennsylvania. We want to divest from genocide, but invest in Pennsylvania. Frankie, as Frankie was uh, alluding to, uh, the war, not war, I'm sorry. Genocide. The genocide is continuing. The 120th days, last night I was on a live broadcast until 5.30 a.m. Uh, with journalists, a group of journalists, there was actually a half a dozen of them on the broadcast from Rafa. And last night they targeted yet another journalist. Her name is Ala Al Hams. Ala Al Hams was targeted in her home, direct hit. She injured severely. She is in critical condition as we speak in the uh, Kuwaiti hospital in Rafa. They are trying to save her leg because it's shattered and other part of her body, uh, shrapnel, shrapnel, I'm sorry. And they uh, killed two of her family members. She is still breathing, but in very critical condition. And there was in the same night, another hit to also journalist extended family two in one night. Luckily the journalist was not there. They uh, destroyed that house and part of the house next to it and resulted in 12 murders in one hit. That's 12, 14 people last night in only two strikes in Rafah. That is the ones that we know of because the, the, the Ministry of Health in Palestine announced the uh, death toll 10 a.m. every morning from the night before. So I'm pretty sure that toll has increased. Uh, not to mention, over the last four, over the last six weeks, I'm sorry, the occupation forces uh, besieged three hospitals. Nasser, Shuhada al-Aqsa Nasser in, in, the, in the eastern side of Khan Yunus. Shuhada al-Aqsa in the middle of the Gaza Strip and also they tried a few times with the European hospital. Luckily for those people in this hospital, that's the hospital that, that's, these are the areas that witnessed uh, the most intense and fierce firefight from the resistance to protect those hospitals. And I was live on one of the broadcasts in one of one of the uh, journalists and I hear every single shell drops on my phone I hear every missile I see sometimes even on the video when they are opening video the vibration of object within half a kilometer from the head because each one of those Missiles, for those of you who haven't, didn't serve in the army, 
If the shrapnels don't kill you, the shockwaves will. If you are within, just right outside of the kill zone of the, of the missile, for instance. Especially older people, children. I've seen images of people lying on the ground. They have no wound on them, on videos. But they're bleeding from their eyes, from their ears, from their mouth for internal hemorrhage and that internal hemorrhage caused by the blast so it is it is by definition a we weapons that they are using there being tested on them to see how for how much of destruction and death each one of those missiles will cause one of those missiles designed by, by factory like this and the insidious engineering of that of that uh, missile, and I, I cannot wrap my head around how can any engineer would actually agree to design something like this. It is designed to penetrate two, three feet of concrete. It reinforced concrete. And it, it would not detonate. It would not explode until it makes its way through the foundation inside and then boom. Now, from physical perspective, they are concentrating the blast inside confined place in a building. Now, even if the amount of, of explosive in that warhead isn't enough really to destroy the building completely, but it is enough to create shock waves that kill every single soul in that building because it is confined to place. Now that kind of design that we're talking about, I mean, there is nothing short of evil. It is a design made just to maximize the death toll among civilians. And they are testing it, the United States of America, testing it on Palestinians so they can show the rest of the world what kind of missiles and gadgets they have and how much they're going to sell it for. So that's what they're doing. They're exporting death to the world. Now, Biden, it is not enough for him, Palestine. It is not. He's now expanding his bombing campaign. As of the last few days, they've been actively bombing in Iraq. They've been bombing in Syria. While everybody paying attention to the genocide that's happening in Gaza, hundreds of people also every day slaughtered in northern, northern Syria. To be, to be precise, in Idlib, Aleppo, around the mountains bordering uh, Turkey. Because everybody eyes now on the larger genocide in Gaza. Nobody really paying attention to what's happening there. And that's also the United States is a participant of. And the irony is not just them, Russia also. And the Assad regime. Not to mention the bombarding of South Lebanon. That's happening on a daily basis. So this insane man is fishing for a third world war. But I would like to say salute to the Yemeni people. Yemen. The poorest, most under-resourced country in the world. Most underfunded army in the world. It stands like a giant before the big bully the big terrorist, the United States of America. And the UK. What a courage, seriously. I mean, what courageous people. If it was not for them, if it was not for the Yemenese people, if anybody familiar with the Haifa uh, port in occupied Palestine, that Haifa port never was empty of ships, mariners. Now it is. 
And that's because of the blockade that Yemen imposed in the Red Sea. And thanks to them, they delivered a fatal hit to the Israeli economy. But you have the Reserve Bank in the US and the US government bankrolling the economy of Israel to keep it afloat because they don't want it to collapse. How can they? They can afford to put hundreds of billions of dollars in the inject hundreds of billions of dollars in the Israeli economy. But they cannot afford to solve the veteran problem in the country. They cannot afford to solve the world hunger. And the world hunger doesn't take that much, actually. What is it? Four, eight billion? What is the number for the world hunger? Four, eight billion? Four, eight billion dollars to solve the world hunger. And we spent on Israel now close to actually by this injections, latest injections of money in them, no less than three hundred seventy billion dollars since 1948. And they are now willing to forgive even student loans for people who cannot afford their student loans. Yet he's able to bypass uh, Congress and fund Israel with as much money as they need. So we all know what Biden, uh, what Republicans and Democrats stand for now. Thanks to Gaza, thanks to Palestine, all the masks has fall, have fallen from their faces in here, in Europe, in everywhere. And we know now who is the enemy and who is the friend. And these people are not a friend, nor should they ever consider themselves Americans, in my opinion. Because they are anything but that. Everything they do is not in the interest of the United States of America, nor the interest of the rest of the humanity. So why should we? call them any more Americans. They want to call us terrorist sympathizers or terrorists outright? No, we're not. Because we're standing for the right thing. We're calling for using our resources within the United States of America in a state of bankrolling a foreign country that once upon a time sunk a warship for the United States, resulted in the death of almost Two, three hundred people, right? I don't remember the number. In the, the Mediterranean in 1967. Anyway, they sunk that ship and everybody, hush hush, did not talk about it, nor did they ever ask for reparations for the families from Israel. Because Israel, even killing our own citizens, they would sweep, sweep it under the, under the rug. It doesn't matter. So whatever, the, whatever Israel does, they're not going to want to stand against them. They're just going to keep funding them. Joe Biden said, if there is no Israel, we have to invent Israel. That's his words. And he calls it the best $3.8 billion we're going to spend in our lifetime. And he is identified himself as a Zionist. So he should be treated as such. And this country should not let be led by Zionists, by APAC, by someone like Biden, Mitch McConnell, Schumer, or Pelosi. These people, they know one thing. They know their bank accounts, right? That's what they know. They take the high moral ground and they talk game, but all lies. So the, the, the march, and the support for Palestine, it is not just for Palestine. It is honestly for everybody in the world. Because these, these evil forces right here in the United States are represented most notably by APAC and the other lobbyists. They are wreaking havoc, not just in Palestine, rather in Africa, in Asia, or over the Middle East, obviously, everywhere. 
Israel has his hand in the, what's happening right now in the Congo. They are actually enslaving children under 10 years old and work in the mines, some of whom they die from the malnutrition. And these mines are owned by Israeli citizens to rob that country also of their resources. Oh, not to mention the New York tunnels. I'm sure everybody saw that. The New York tunnels. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't blame it on Hamas this time also. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, what are these New York tunnels for? Human trafficking. Young girls. They're trafficking. That's what it's, what it's for. They get caught in Mexico. Got arrested. Half a dozen Israeli citizens. Even our Secretary of State have an Israeli citizen. I can understand how on earth a country would appoint somebody in a cabinet position that holds a foreign country passport. How on earth could we accept that? And there are several, there are actually more than a dozen of them in the cabinet of, of Joe Biden. They are holding uh, the Israeli passport. I mean, America needs to wake up and wake up soon. Otherwise, this country is headed toward a cliff, toward the edge of a cliff. And there is no going back, coming back from that. So free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free Palestine is also freedom for here, a real freedom, not illusion. So we have to keep fighting for it. We have to keep speaking about it. And we have to do everything in our power to stop this Nazi governments. And I want to call them out loud, Nazi governments. That's what they are. Because they are for ethnic cleansing. They are no different than Hitler. Hitler, Hitler waged war against people for their, because they, are not, they, they don't look like him. The Zionists, they are doing the same thing. They are ethno-state. That's what they are. And they stand for genocide, and they stand for the killing of everybody, and take the earth literally just for them. They want this earth to be inhabited literally just by them. And whatever, whoever survived among us, according to them, will be slave to them. That's what they want. So that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for our freedom too, not just for the Palestinians. Thank you for being here. From 